Today we're talking about how to put your books into stores. A lot of you, when they ask about that, you're talking about putting them on the shelves at Walmart or Barnes and Noble or Costco. You're not going to get into Walmart, Costco or Target. Barnes and Noble, you might get into, and we're going to discuss that in the second part of this video. The first thing we have to look at is, are you doing this to make money or are you doing this just to reach customers? The reason I say that is because you're going to see that the money you make is going to be very minimal. I have here a 300 page book, six by nine, black and white, with a glossy cover, perfect binding. Ingram charges $5.48 to print that. If you sell it at $14, the dealer is going to expect a 50 to 55% discount. At 50%, seven dollars seven dollars and with tax and shipping your book comes out to be 692 delivered subtracting that from seven dollars gives you eight cents that's what you're looking at making per book and I've ordered 25 books here if you do it without tax you make 640 which gives you 60 cents how do you do it without tax you have to get a resale permit from your state and then deal with both Ingram, Kindle, and draft to digital to get on their resellers side. You give them your information, the tax number and everything like that, and they set you up and then all of a sudden they stop charging you sales tax. You can start drop shipping books. You, however, have to keep track of this and you either have to pay sales tax use tax or show that you have sold them to another reseller who has a resale permit when you go to your bookstores in your local town including Barnes and Noble and you talk to the manager you have to start negotiating you have to negotiate the discount they're used to making 50 to 55 percent if you want to go with that fine and make eight cents a book or 60 cents a book that's great we don't go past that they make seven dollars uh, you can possibly get them down to a 45 percent discount or even a 40 percent discount and that increases what you will make as you can see on my little chart on a total of 25 books through Ingram and you can get them cheaper through Amazon but we have some problems there that we're gonna have to discuss but through Ingram at a 50% discount with the tax, your total on 25 books is $2. At a 45% discount, your total is $19.50. With a 40% discount, you make $37. And as you can see, without tax, it jumps up. Without tax, you make $15 at the 50% discount, $32.50 at the 45% discount, and $50 at the 40% discount. Now, you're probably going to leave these on consignment, which means they aren't going to pay you. They'll give you a memo. You get the resale number from them. You give them your resale number. Uh, they give you a, an invoice or you give them an invoice, which is how much they're going to pay for the book when they sell it. And then they're going to put it on their shelf and try to sell it. But you need to find out, are they going to liquidate the book if it doesn't sell? If after a year, you don't come back and you don't ask anything and it's still unsold, are they going to liquidate the book or are they going to call you and tell you to come pick it up? You don't want to bug them. When should you come in to find out if it is sold? Now, as I mentioned, Amazon is cheaper. We have some small problems here. First of all, you don't want to bring an Amazon box with you. You don't want to bring that smiley box, especially not into Barnes & Noble. Amazon's their biggest competitor. Second of all, if your book has a Kindle Direct ISBN, that independently published ISBN. For some strange reason, on expanded distribution, Barnes & Noble takes none of my books with that independently published ISBN, which makes me wonder if they've got it in their filters at their database, which makes me wonder if you walk in with a book that has a Kindle ISBN and the manager tries to put that ISBN number into his database if he's going to get a red flag and say, gee, I'm sorry, we can't accept this book. So if you're going to go with Kindle 
who is about a dollar less on printing, you should have your own ISBN with them. It's that simple. Go get some ISBNs. The idea is not to have a Kindle ISBN. If you get your books through draft to digital I think you're fine. I think they're going to use their own, which says draft to digital Okay, so this is getting books into bookstores on a small scale. Now let's talk about getting it in on a larger scale. And for that, you have to deal with Ingram Spark. They're the only one that lets you make books returnable. And that is the only inducement to a dealer to buy your book. It is an industry wide practice that all bookstores can return all books for credit at any time in any condition generally because they didn't sell and this is an industry-wide practice hatchet does this random house does this simon and schuster does this they know they have to give dealers their money back if a book doesn't sell especially since one insider in the publishing industry says that four out of five books flop so here's what you have to do barnes and noble will consider your book they have to approve you as a vendor of record and then you send them information about your titles. You tell them you're distributed through Ingram. You tell them you will make the book returnable and that's going to be returnable to every dealer. So Ingram deals with 40,000 dealers. At least 10,000 of them might be enticed to buy your book. Now that's the problem is 10,000 times $7 wholesale because you have to refund that wholesale price if they return the book. The question is, is can you refund $70,000? Can you refund $700? Can you refund $100? Ingram has your credit card. They're going to charge you back on that credit card or send you a bill. And if you don't pay that bill, they're gonna end your account. And if you don't pay that bill, they're gonna turn you in for collection and that hurts your credit rating. So the real question is, is do you want to really get into putting books into bookstores? Because if Barnes & Noble says, yep, we think we can sell your book, we like it, we think it's a good book, we want 670 of them. Now the first thing you have to face, you have to pay to print the books. If it costs 585 to print the book, and Barnes & Noble orders one each, which is what they say they will do if they approve your book, and if you make your book returnable, Ingram is going to bill you $3,672 for printing. They're either going to charge that to your credit card, if your credit card will take it, or they're going to send you a bill and ask for a check. They might even ask for a certified check. Once you send the money to Ingram, they'll print the books and ship them to Barnes & Noble and then they'll bill Barnes & Noble $4,690, which is 670 books at $7, 50%. I don't think you're gonna be able to get away with 45 or 40%. That's something you have to talk with the Barnes & Noble people about when you make your book presentation. They're gonna to wanna to know what is our discount going to be. Typically it's 55 to 50. You say 50%, they'll probably go for it. You say 45%, not so sure. You say 40%, they may not go for it at all. You are responsible for returns. So if Barnes & Noble returns 100 books, you will be billed $700. If they can't sell all of them and return all of them, you are billed $4,690. If you want the books back, it's $2 per book. That's $1,342 for shipping could end up being less if Ingram is being nice about it but that's what the book value says if you don't want them back they get trashed the covers are torn usually at the dealer and they're thrown in the trash bin any foreign books that get returned is twenty dollars if you want the book back otherwise they're trashed so this is how it is if you want to have books into stores if you found this video useful Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good writing day.